What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm updating a deck that I do pretty often here on the channel. However, I haven't updated it in some time and that is Yosenju. Now Yosenju is an anti-meta deck and in today's version, we're gonna be showing off a go second build where we really wanna break boards in OTK. Now, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel. We do deck profiles, combo videos, do replays and all that good stuff so you can find it right here on the channel make sure to stay tuned in and to do that all you got to do is subscribe so thank you guys all for watching i do appreciate every single one of you and with that let's get right into the deck profile all right so let's just get right into it over here we are starting off of course with the yosenju monsters and those are three yosenju comma one three yosenju comma two as well as three yosenju comma three these are the most important yosenju monsters they get themselves on the board and they each have pretty cool unique effects comma one lets you bounce a card when you have another yosenju comma two lets you attack directly which can be kind of relevant when it comes to time and comma three lets you search another yosenju name when a yosenju inflicts battle damage so these are the most important ones these are the ones you need because these are the ones that get bodies on the board for you and essentially you really want to maximize and optimize how this deck plays and to do that you don't want Want to be playing any of the yosenju names that don't really do much for you right so you are playing these nine and the last two that you are playing are two yosenju sujik now sujik might be one of those cards that i was just talking about hey you want to optimize it but sujik doesn't really help you optimize however sujik is really important because one of the things this deck lacks and you're going to see later on in the deck profile that you're going to try to make up for as much as possible but this deck lacks putting damage up on the board and one of the best ways to put damage up on the board is sujik because he boosts any of your yosenju monsters by a thousand attack which is is really really powerful so essentially you're going to be summoning him last because comma one on normal summon can normal summon another one so you can normal summon comma two comma three and then once all your commas are out of your hand the last one you're going to want to normal summon is your sujik and then this way sujik can boost it by a thousand and then there you go you're off to the races so that's it for the yosenju monsters i wouldn't change these up isna is pretty good don't get me wrong however the only hand traps this deck really loses to is imperm and valor and people are not so much on valor anymore maybe imperm but that's pretty much it it. so for that reason i'm not playing isna you really don't need that card these are the best yosenjus then we're playing a ton of hand traps and board breakers because this is a going second deck and it is a deck that really wants to stop your opponent as much as possible so that you can set up your own boards and try to go for game and if not go for game set up your own pretty powerful boards so for hand traps we're playing three ash just the most generic hand trap we're also playing three nibiru nibiru is really good in this deck because i don't think i mentioned this earlier but if you guys have ever played yosenju before you guys know this all the yosenju monsters are essentially like spirit monsters so at the end phase they're going to come back to your hand so if there ever is a point where yosenjus are on your side of the field they're always going to bounce back to your hand which means that you're always going to be safe to nibiru which is really nice but nib i think in this format is really powerful and it's something that people don't expect in the main deck and it breaks boards which is really important for you and on top of that it puts a monster on your opponent's side of the field which is also important for you so there's a lot of synergies that you guys are going to see later on in the deck profile why nib works really well another card that works really well in this deck is a uh, shifter the shifter is just so broken because this deck doesn't really send anything to the graveyard you're not linking cards away you don't really care about what is in your your graveyard and shifter is just one of the most broken hand traps in the format in the game in general so that's why we're playing the three shifter if you're resolving this against a lot of decks they can't really do much and if they're stuck on one to two monsters on the board that's when this deck plays the best this deck plays the best when your opponent has one to two monsters and you're just able to push over them right so that's why we're playing these hand traps now a card that's kind of like a hand trap well it's literally a hand trap but on top of that it's a board breaker is we're playing three imperm so imperm is really good here it kind of leads the way into the board breakers that you guys are going to see here in a second but it's a really powerful hand trap that going first of course you can set it going second you can use it as a hand trap or if you draw for a turn as your sixth card you can wait for it and use it as a negate which is really really powerful then for the board breaker cards and the other going second cards we're playing three kashtar fenrir three alpha three gamma seal all right so you guys can see we're playing a mix of hand traps and board breakers but in this deck specifically it works really well because gamma seal is a card for example that puts itself onto your opponent's side of the field helps you break boards now why this is really powerful again we're going to get into it when we get into the spell cards and into the extra deck but these cards are all really good because one of the main things that i mentioned earlier in the video was that the thing that this deck struggles with the most is putting damage on the board and the best thing about these cards over here is fenrir 2400 has some battle phase tricks which is really really powerful alpha summons itself 
3000 attack really really powerful gamma seal of course putting itself on your opponent's side of the field it's only 2200 so the thing is if you gamma seal your opponent let's say they put up a negate right a baron and you gamma seal the baron now what you can do is you can special fenrir or special alpha and then now you have a bigger body than the gamma seal and you got rid of the baron and now you can continue all the rest of your plays right which is really really insane so that's why we're playing these cards because these cards all synergize really well with each other also under shifter whatever gets gamma sealed gets banished which is really really powerful as well so all of these cards the board breakers as well as the hand traps they're all just really powerful together and they all work really really well in this deck so i wouldn't change this up at all i know it looks like a big engine but if you think about it these cards here are going to help you win games and that's one of the most important things in this deck because it's not good enough if you break your opponent's board you have to be able to win the game and these do that for you so to round off the deck, we're playing three Tenki, of course. Tenki searches all of your Yosenju monsters as they're all Beast Warriors. So Tenki, of course, is a searcher for all the names. And that's why you can play such a limited amount of names because Tenki is always going to get you to the name that you need. Then we're playing two Desires. As you guys saw, all the most important cards in this deck are three ofs. And you really need to see as many cards as possible in this deck because the more monsters you see, the more cards you see, the easier it is to break your opponent's board and to be able to go for game. So you don't really mind banishing anything in your deck because everything is a three of and the odds that you banish three of something are very 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 low so that's why i like to play two desires of course and then we're playing a harpy's feather duster which kind of is a board breaker as well maybe i should have left it there but harpy's of course is really good into back row matchups we have the one called by the grave and lastly for the 40th card we are playing the one double or nothing now double or nothing is insanely powerful in this deck because the yosenjus are all level fours and you can go into utopia for game so easily there are so many times where you can actually just put a uh where is it a gamma seal onto your opponent's side of the field and then make a utopia double into utopia which is now able to just help you otk so that's why uh the double or nothing i think this package is so important in this deck and this is just the last 40th card that we're playing for the extra deck over here, you guys are going to see that most of this is just rank 4 toolbox. There's only a couple cards that you're only going to consistently go into. The Utopia double package is one of the main ones that you guys are going to go into because, of course, this is one of your OTK buttons, which is really, really nice. It just gives you another way to win games, which is really cool. And then the other card that you go into often is Cowboy. Now, Cowboy is insanely powerful, and that's because it's not once per turn. So you can technically go into two Cowboys in a turn, which is really, really powerful. And that is really, really relevant as well, because if you are playing with your Yosenjus and not so much your big bodies over here what you can do is poke for a ton of damage and then you can make it two rank fours you make two cowboys and you try to go for game there also in time of course cowboy is really good and then you guys are going to see the rest of the monsters are just rank four monsters that are just toolbox so roach dweller evil swarm dugaris we got tornado dragon baguska digusto emerald so these are all just toolbox cards that you guys can go into depending on the situation that you guys are in right and then we're playing a little zeus package so we're playing chaka nine borbo and zeus this is really powerful when you don't think you're going to be able to otk let's say you break a board you don't think you're going to be able to otk your opponent you can end on a zeus and if you're ending on a zeus of course keep in mind zeus can end on all of these but with this package specifically if you're ending on a zeus it's just so that your opponent can't remake their board which is really really powerful and the last card we're playing is the one underworld goddess this deck obviously can spam a lot of monsters because of the yosenjus and being able to put four monsters on the board and then being able to out a towers like monster with the underworld goddess can be really powerful so this is just the only link monster we're playing but as you guys can see other than these four cards over here and i'd say maybe the zeus all of these are just toolbox cards that you can go into depending on the matchup now lastly i'm going to show you guys a side deck but keep in mind your side deck is always going to be built on personal preference and it's going to be built based off of your locals so if your locals is a lot of back row players you want to play more back row hey if your locals is a lot of combo you want to play combo hey etc etc but i'm going to show you guys a side deck that i was just putting together and i think can be very powerful so the one card we're playing here is the pancratops pancratops is of course really good going second to certain matchups specifically stuff like labyrinth and whatnot this is really good so we're not maining it so i think deciding it is really really powerful we're also signing the two lightning storm as well as the three cosmic cyclone these are really important because you guys saw we have pretty much a million ways to deal with front row aka monsters however we don't have that many ways to deal with back row harpy's feather duster of course is in the main but to be able to otk sometimes against certain matchups we really need to get rid of the back row and these are just the best cards to do that lightning storm of course is good into some front row matchups as well but these cards are really good against back row and that's it for the going second cards because you guys can see the main deck is already so full of so many good going second cards so going first we're playing a ton of cards here we're playing three barrier barrier is really good of course into brand 
Brandon, into Manadium, into Sword Soul, calling Synchro, calling Fusion is just so, so broken. This is pretty much a turn stopper. So that's why we're playing the three barrier. We're also playing three anti-spell. In the main deck, you guys saw we're not playing too many spell cards. So I think it's really powerful when you can play anti-spell against decks like Striker and whatnot, which is really good. Cyclone is also really good against Striker. So you guys can see that these kind of side deck cards can go against every kind of different matchup and still be relevant. And then lastly, we're playing three Solemn Judgment. I just think Solemn Judgment makes a lot more sense in the side deck because if you are forced to go first, because this is of course a going second deck, you can side in like nine cards like this and take out nine going second cards or nine board breakers. And it just becomes so powerful because no matter what you do, you know, you're going to be able to protect your board with Judgment. So that's it for the side deck. But again, keep in mind, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. This is just a skeleton for you guys to use that can kind of cover pretty much every matchup. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Yosenju for this July 2023 format. This deck is built to be all of the best decks right now. So Manadium, Sword Soul, Purely, Kashura, all those decks this deck is built to beat them and that's why it's considered an anti-meta deck. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel. We do deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff. You catch it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that. Thank you guys all for watching. I do appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko sign it out. Peace. Get up, get up.